Let's learn how to create a website in Visual Studio 2017. And I'm using the Community Edition. I'm going to go ahead and click on File, New, Project. And I want to make sure that I'm going to use Visual C Sharp with the web folder selected. And then I'm going to choose ASP.NET Web Application and make sure it's the .NET Framework. I'm currently using the Framework 4.6.1. Wanted to, you could choose other frameworks. I'm just going to use that default. I'm going to come down to the name and give it a brand new name. I'll call it First Web App. I can change the location by clicking Browse. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the solution name the same and leave Create Directory for Solution. Click OK. Then you have to specify what type of .NET application you want to create. There's different types you can do. First one is called empty. That simply says you click on that and you're telling the .NET framework in Visual Studio that you want to go be in charge of everything. You want to create everything on your own. Web forms, that's what we used to use for a lot of our web development. And that's where we had to keep track of the state between different pages. And MVC, which are model views and controllers, is the one that we're going to create. The model represents the data. The view represents what the user actually sees, which is our HTML, and the controller represents the manager in between the model and the view. This is really considered a three-tier model with our business layer, our data layer, and our presentation layer, with the presentation layer being the view, the data layer being the model, and the business layer being the controller. In other words, it controls all the rules that's going to happen between the model and the view. I'm going to go ahead and leave MVC checked. I'm not going to worry about unit test right now. Authentication. This allows you to have built-in security in your web app. By default, it's no authentication. You can change that and make it to where it's individual user accounts. And this is where it actually goes off of maybe a third-party authentication or logins that you have built into SQL Server. Or you could log in based upon a network domain that you already have access to, or you can just build it upon your Windows authentication when you log into Windows and it asks for your username and password. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine as no authentication. And click OK, and then once again click OK. Visual Studio goes out and creates a brand new solution for you, and within that solution it has a project, and that project is going to have a file structure with a whole bunch of different folders with source code already made for you. And that's because we said we wanted the MVC application. One of the first things you might see is a screen like this, which talks about the overview. And there's a tab that says Connected Services. And in the Connected Services, this allows you to go ahead and connect to maybe account services you have online, um, things like Azure or Office 365. You can also uh, monitor application insights, and this says, how well is your Visual Studio application running? I'm going to go ahead and close this window and not worrying about, worry about any of those, and take a look at what we have over here. One of the first folders you'll see in your project, first web app, is called Properties. If I expand the properties, we'll see a file called assemblyinfo.cs. Assembly Info CS file, this simply contains information about this project that you're working on. Things like what's the title, what's the description, company information, copyright information, um, assembly version, things that if you want to control which give uh, more documentation for your project. The .cs extension simply says it's C sharp code. The References folder provides a list of all those references to other source code that is brought into your application. Um, it's, it's almost like it's all the using statements, those libraries that are out there that you want to be able to have access to. The App Data folder says that this contains any type of data files, including if you had some data, uh, MDF files, XML files that you want to work with within your application. 
The App Start folder contains files that are necessary to help configure how the application or the website is going to run. The bundle config.cs file helps you manage how style sheets work and script files, how they work in your project. Uh, it allows you to reduce the number of network traffic and allows you to optimize the requests that are being processed. The filter config file is a class where you can write custom logic that says you want to execute something before or after action methods are executing. The file that we really want to look at is going to be your route config. And your route config file determines how a user can actually work with your website that you create. By default, there is one route defined. And in that route, it has a name called default. And it says that if someone accesses your website, the first thing it's going to think when it looks at a word is going to be the name of a controller. And then if there's a slash, the next thing it's going to be is going to be the action method, and then a slash, and then any optional parameters. And by default, if you don't type anything in and try to access that website, then you're going to look at the home controller and find a method called index and see if there's any parameters that you're working with. The content folder is where you put any of your CSS or other resources your application might use. For instance, I can right mouse click on content and choose new folder, add, new folder, type in the word images, and now I can put all the pictures that I want to use within my application or my website in this folder. Let's go ahead and drop an application into this website. I'm going to go open up Windows Explorer and I'm going to go find a picture that I already have and I'll drop it, drag and drop that into the folder. So I found my image and I'm going to drag that and drop it to images and we have this error message that pops up. And it's just telling you that it might take a while to copy it, but go ahead and just click OK and it copies the file. We now have that image available for our website to use through our HTML tags. We're going to come back to controllers in just a minute, but a brief explanation is that the controllers folder contains what we call the controller C sharp code. That's the code that says it's the manager in between a view and a model. It gets data from the model and sends it to the view. Or it tells the, the view, hey, you're what the user is going to see. You're the HTML code. And it sends that HTML view to a browser. The fonts directory contains a list of default fonts that this website will use. You can add others if you want. Models directory will contain the C sharp structure that represents any data that your website will use. The scripts directory contains all of your JavaScript. The views that will contain all the pages that your controllers will access. If you notice, we have one called uh, Home, which matches our home controller. And anytime you make a controller, Visual Studio automatically makes a subfolder under the Views folder with the same name. So we have Home Controller here, meaning that Visual Studio makes a Home folder. And then within that folder, you'll have your CSHTML files, which is your C-sharp HTML files, which is what the user will see in their browser. In the Views folder, we also have a Shared folder. The Shared folder contains some files, a layout, and an error file. But the important thing to start with would be your view start CSHTML. If you take a look at that file, it simply says, anytime you create a view, it's, the system's going to come out and look for a view start file. And it's going to say, hey, for every view we make, we want to go find that file and bring it into our view. 
is it allows us to have partial views, meaning we can have different pieces of a view and mesh them into one big view for the user to see. This says, if I go create a view, it's going to automatically go out, look for a view start, it found it, and then it's going to say, go find this folder, start at the root directory, go to the views subfolder, go to the shared subfolder, and find the file underscore layout CSHTML. That's this file right here. This file simply acts as HTML that will automatically be included in your view. And it sort of meshes everything in together into one big view. You'll see this when we actually run it. For instance, when we go to run it, watch for text like application name and home and about and context or contacts. And then see if there's a footer that's also included. We won't talk about this much right now, but the render body says go out and find other views and grab their data and bring it into this file. That's how the joining occurs. Also, joining occurs with the render section statement. You'll learn more about that as you proceed through the videos. And then the last, one of the last files that I really want you to look at is the web config. These others, application insights, that's if, if you want to be able to monitor how well your web app is processing. What icon do you want to use for the web app? Global ASAX simply is like your, your main file in Java or C++ that says this is where we start and here's files that have to go and run to set up our application. Notice we have our filter config, our route config, our bundle config files, which we saw earlier, up in our app start folder. Packages config says, how is this whole project going to be packaged up? What are all the things you need when you go to deploy this? And then the web config. This acts like an initialization file. When your website is first executed, it comes out and it says, OK, what are the things we need to know in order to run this website? What are the app settings? When we put it on the web, what are things we need to know? Like, do we want debug to be true or false? What's the framework we want to use during compiling? What's the framework we want to use when we run it? When we actually run this program, what um, files or libraries do we want to bring in for this application to use? And you're going to see later on when we start using this that this is the file that we can go and modify to tell our application to use databases that are out there on our server somewhere. So that's the file structure of what gets created. And if I just ran that program right now, we would see that it's going to go out and build the project, and then it's going to run that and show what code really gets created for you when you create an MVC application. This screen says that it's currently in the build mode, and it's rendering it for the Chrome, your browser, to look at it. And look at what happens. I didn't write any code. How did I get an application name? How did I get a home button or, or an about? or a home menu item, or an about menu item, or contact menu item. And if I click on those, it actually takes me to a specific web page. I didn't write any of this, but it works. If I click on about, it says go to the home controller, and go try to find an about method in that home controller. Let's see if we actually have source code that has that. Over in our application, here's our home controller. And it says, hey, home controller, do you have a method called about? And there it is. And it says, hey, about method, what do you want to do? It says, I want to go find the view called about. Do we have a view called about in the home folder? There's the home folder. There's the view for about. And it displays that or sends this view to the browser for the user to see. And this is how an MVC application gets created. It's a nice framework for you to start so you can come in and start changing things, which we'll do in our next video.